Right. Um, okay, everybody. So last week we were looking at those um, lovely pictures of tulips. Some of you brought in some uh, nice flowers and stuff and uh, were working with those. So, um, yeah, we had a really good lesson. We used watercolours. We used colour pencils and a little bit of biro to put some sort of movement and marks over the top of the picture and i'll just put myself on pin hang on a second right there you go um okay and then um so uh and we also used the um measuring technique the comparative technique to measure out the jug and then the single line uh, technique to create this kind of organic um, fast um, drawing of the of the flowers in order to get this um, natural feel into our drawing as well and then obviously we went into the background with the watercolors and then uh, the color pencils and the pen so um, the next thing um, that I asked you to bring in today um, was a pen, um, particularly a barrel pen, or there are other pens that do what we're um, looking to do today. Um, so that is um, drawing the drawing the picture with the pen and then adding a little bit of water uh, to it and then that creating uh, this inky sort of impression. Uh, it's a lot of fun because you get the control of using the pen but you can then loosen it all up a little bit um, with a little bit of water and a brush. So it's a, a really good technique and people have been enjoying it quite a lot today. So uh, we'll have a look anyway at um, what we were looking at last week. So that's what we were doing last week with the tulips. Um, as we've just been talking about and then uh, before that we were doing some different drawing techniques with um, uh, ordinary pencil um, so today what we're going to do is I've posted online lots of pictures or on the drive anyway lots of pictures of windows um, window um, you know, looking out through a window and looking at windows that are kind of interesting with a bit of texture on. So we're going to use that as a subject. And also we will be, uh, I mean, if you wanted to do a plant like we did last time, it's a brilliant technique to use with plants. Um, and you all have seen me drawing out my uh, stairway picture that I did um, last week as well. So I think you already understand the technique um, pretty well. Um, the process of doing this is to, first of all, get your photograph and obviously draw it out uh, using just an ordinary pencil. Uh, the reason I want you to use a normal pencil is because obviously you can make your mistakes at that stage uh, with where things are going to go and how things fit in and make your adjustments before then going in with the um, almost permanent pen uh, with some of the marks and the brush you can actually brush away a lot of the marks uh, that you've made if you put enough water on but you don't necessarily want too much water on anyway because the the ink will start to spread quite significantly um, if you leave it with lots of water on um, so um, I'll just draw in a bit closer to um, this one the one that I did a little last week so up here in the top corner um, you can see where the blue and the pink is what's interesting about these pens is they must be quite cheap pens I guess um, and and um, Christine was just saying you can get them from Tesco's actually um, but not the Tesco brand you need to use the actual barrel or b-roll <laughs> somebody said b-roll today so I'm not sure but uh, uh, if we look over here where you see the blue and the pink um, you'll get blue and pink anyway, but if you put too much water on, it'll spread out. Um, it'll just keep going, basically. So use your water quite sparingly. Um, but having said that, if you do find it spreads out, you can always wait until it's dry and then work back over it and put the marks in, which is what I've done um, in this on this corner just over here, as you can see. Um, and then in other areas where perhaps you want a bit of this inky effect, but you still want the marks to come through, use the water sparingly in little bits of like dashes and dots of water over the top of your mark making to really make um, the shadows on, say, the bushes and things 
like I've got along along here. Um, one other thing you can do, of course, uh, one of my favourite things to do is you can work back into it with Biro. I can't remember if I worked into it with Biro at all. I think I just stuck with the pens in this case. Um, but you'll have to watch the video and tell me otherwise. Um, so, yeah, you can have a lot of fun. And once, once the ink's a bit dry, as I said, you can work back over the top. Um, and one of the nice things I found about this is you get these wonderful uh, pinks and blues. So it's almost like using um, dippy pen and ink, only uh, you've got a bit more precision with the mark making and, and so forth. I'll just have a quick look at the flower one um, because that's quite interesting for the colour as well. Although this photo wasn't so good, I should put that in the front. There we go. So you can see quite a lot of pink coming through in here. So the, the ink is actually a black ink, but you still you still get this kind of pinky effect and bits of blue. Um, so it's a lot of fun uh, to have a play around with this today. So hopefully you've chosen your photograph and you've got yourself a pen. Um, if you're thinking, um, looking at the stairway picture, for example, oh, it's going to be really complicated. I'm worried about it going wrong. Then what I suggest you do, of course, is um, you fold up your photograph to make a grid from it so for example if you're going to use this photograph i printed it this one happens to be a4 but you may have printed it half size but um as you're aware i think everybody has had this before from me is you can fold your paper in halves multiple times like this you can keep going if, if you can uh, and then when you unfold it, you've got an automatic grid that you can use. And if you printed it out A4 size, you can then lay it onto your sheet of paper and literally just mark out where all the folds are like this and then draw your grid where those lines were, obviously. So done that. I'll just do this very quickly. I know that most of you understand this already, but it's the very quickest way of creating a grid. No maths. <laughs> so just join all those up vertically and then go back the other way. I actually drew mine out freehand because I quite enjoy the challenge of, you know, trying to get the staircase right and so forth. Um, just by sight um, so you you know if you're worried about proportions as well remember you can use your pencil as a, com a comparative technique so compare one area of your image against another so let's say on this one I could say right I'm going to use the width of the pot to measure how tall the doorway is for example so three and a half of those widths up there which obviously means you've got to start somewhere with your with your drawing so you might start um, by sketching very loosely mind you sketching out um, this frame and putting the pot on it and then working out where everything else is going to go comparatively if anyone wants me to go through that a little bit more uh, I can do that again but um, but we'll we'll crack on anyway um, so I did this last week. I didn't get to finish mine because I went on and started all these uh, sorts of things. That one's upside down. So you can use all sorts of techniques like cross hatching, scribbling, all those things um, to create your mark making. So I'm just I'll just do a quick. Um, I can't remember if I did this last week or not, but I'll do it again if I have. So literally with these pens you you might be thinking oh i've only put a couple of lines on it's not gonna do much as far as making it go dark but in actual fact there it the ink spreads so much that you get quite nice dark tones very quickly using this and obviously if you add a little bit more water on the edge i put a bit too much on here but if you add more and more water as you go away from that area, you can create a dark to light tone. And you'll probably, especially where the ink started from, you'll see that's probably where it's going to go the most pink. 
but if we look here where I did those cross hatch marks you can see that they've almost kind of disappeared from there because I applied a fair amount of water all right so basically once you've gone around the whole of your picture um, the light the pencil drawing you just go you can go around the edges or go around the lines that you've drawn and then start to apply the water and that's really where it starts to get really really fun because you can see a very quick process um, uh, taking place in front of you where the tone and shadow really brings the image out uh, quite nicely this one with the window I did because I, I didn't want to use the the barrel pen uh, loads and loads to create a really dark area so I did go in there with a black biro pen because I've got no end of black biro pens um, so you could you could do that or if you've got some black ink anyway some Indian ink then just use that just use that to put in some really dark areas when you finish playing around with your pen as well okay oh one more thing which um, if you've got it at home is you could use if I can find one I've usually got some in my little box over here is some candle wax or wax crayon there it is so here we've got um, candle wax you can do the old wax resist technique so I'll just do a little bit just zoom out a bit now so on this i wanted the edges of the window frame to stay nice and white so that the inside stood out a bit more so you can use the candle wax around the edges or wherever it is you want to to create an area that's going to stay grainy or white and then if you apply the pen around that that area and then use your brush you'll see that the the white stays white like that just there so it's another nice little addition to what we're doing to use a little bit of candle wax if you've got got it or if you've got a wax crayon somewhere um, you could try that as well just to zoom into that so you can see that a bit closer um, as somebody pointed out this morning, if you wanted to um, keep the marks that you've made, so for example, this one just here, um, the marks were applied before the candle wax. So I put the put the marks down, then I got the candle wax, went over the top, and then do the pen, which you're going to dilute and you can keep the marks that are underneath the candle wax which is a really nice um, addition as well if you want something to stay at it as it is you're kind of uh, masking that area and keep preserving those uh, marks underneath which is a which is really good fun as well okay brilliant so um if you haven't already started um please please go ahead I'll just show I did want to show you what I've been up to today um, which I will do when I find it there it is so I've also next week um, I would like to do a little bit of acrylic painting so this is a similar subject to what we've been what we're doing today um, you can see the link between having a vase and a view through a window we've been looking at uh, flowers or foliage in pots and things so I'm hoping to continue um, doing similar things um, although I want to look at some architecture as well and colour and paint um, so next week please bring along your acrylic paints so that we can have a little uh, go at painting this is what I've been painting today um, <clears throat> I've not finished it just yet but there we go fantastic thank you thank you so um it, the idea is that we're using lots of layers of very flat color to create uh, this sense of light in the picture and then in the background here i've gone for this um kind of impressionist idea of using lots of stipples and dots and so forth 
um, to create that kind of blurred um, leafy effect uh, behind there. As you can see, I've not um, yet done the carnations that are in the jug, but um, I can perhaps do that in a few minutes when we're all started. But this is what we'll be doing um, next week. OK, and uh, the, the buildings and things will be something like this, quite um, smooth, but flat areas of colour with some tone and shadow because it's in usually these types of buildings in bright areas and so forth. So we can get some tone and shadow, but we can also paint some really lovely flat areas of colour at the same time. So we'll be doing that um, next week as the next part of what we're what we're doing this uh, term okay so um does anyone have any questions about um any of that at the moment i think that's i think your glass painting's amazing i love the jug you've got that beautiful thank you yeah yeah it was good fun doing it um it do you know what i, I was thinking of, I the colors of you thank you yeah, I was thinking this morning it'd be really nice to get on and do a little bit of painting after we've been drawing so much. So, so just um, starting off the lesson, um, practically anyway, by finishing off the carnations in here. So I mixed um, like a dark, uh, obviously a dark green. Uh, and I did make it a bit um, slightly darker with a bit of ultramarine and burnt umber mixed in with some green as well, um, which I think was a sap green. Um, and the approach really to, to this painting that I've taken is to be quite loose and not to worry so much about, for example, on the frame, everything being really precise and so forth just to be quite loose about it so as you see the details on the frames themselves aren't absolutely crisp or precise it's more about looking at the lighting on the windows and getting the highlights and the shadows in the right place um, being you know not not worrying too much about getting nice straight edges and so forth uh, as you can see now I'm adding in some shadows on to the carnations, the white, white carnations around the window frame in the center there. Some of them were a little bit darker. So I've darkened them down using a little bit of yellow ochre and a touch of uh, green in there as well. As I could see some green in the photo. So on this one, uh, so we moved on very quickly there um, to this beautiful uh, scene of um, Sort of a, I don't know if you could call it a adobe house. It's like a plastered house. Um, I imagine it to be in somewhere like Greece, although I could be wrong. It's just me taking a guess. I didn't really look to see where this house was. But the interesting thing about this photograph for me was that the sky is such a beautiful blue. And then you've got this blue or the same blue on the door as well. Uh, oh, this was me. Uh, this is me. I was just sketching out um, the design uh, or the all the shapes first of all on here, and um, putting in some of the details. I think the interesting thing about painting this particular piece was, you think, okay, lots of flat color, um, which is what you can see me putting in right from the beginning there. Um, but as you look at it, you can see perhaps you need a glaze of uh, a brown back over the top to tone down the uh, yellow that I'm putting on here. This is actually yellow ochre. I think the screen makes it look a little bit brighter, but it's pretty close to what I'm uh, aiming for in this picture. Um, but that you can see there is tone in the yellow as well, tone, shadow and uh, highlights or uh, uh, lighter um, areas of colour in there too, um, which I can put on a little bit later. Um, this was this blue. I found um, that's a violet colour and primary blue mixed together with some white, provided me with that lovely rich blue. Um, just to point out as well that the blue in the photograph 
um, is all the blue is always or the colors at least are always lighter when you do a print off from my inkjet printer so I'm allowing myself to go a little bit richer and darker with the colors as well but the interesting thing was that the colors on the doors and the pots are very similar to the sky so I found that quite intriguing um, when I was making this piece uh, for the class so making way with the same colors just filling in some uh, color with the um, violet uh, primary blues again once you've got in the larger shapes on here you can start to hone in on some of the um, details so there's like um, a little bit of detail on that pot with the cactus in so I've left a bit of space to put that in later um, and then here all I did really is I took a because I thought it was it looks a little bit violety the uh, shadow on that doorway up there so I decided to use that um, generally over a lot of the the white shadows or the shadows on the white areas to get me started on those shadows there so it's just violet and white mixed together and it starts to give a little bit of form to those um, steps on there as well and then um, I used burnt umber and ultramarine with some of my violet blue um, to create that really deep uh, color that you can see in the shadows of the doorway down there and going back over it again just to make it nice and deep so already we see a little bit of a recess inside of the door I think I do add a little bit on the pots as well and this was me just talking about the um, ink technique that I was discussing earlier so there we go a little bit of shadow on the pots themselves so now we've got a little bit of uh, this three-dimensional quality uh, so the light on the sides of the pots and the shadows on the left hand side I think for me the the bit that um, really started to work obviously I put the shadows and some of the details back onto the door here and then add highlights and shadows using that same blue but adding white and dark and using some of that darker color over there as well um, this was quite interesting that bleach will work to remove some of the ink that was on the uh, drawing so if you've got areas you want to put more detail in with highlights you can use bleach on top of the uh, inks as well which is fantastic if you don't want to use bleach because it's too smelly you can use um, sanitizing fluid as well which works very well with these sorts of things just down there you can see a bit of that orangey yellow around the side of the pot on the left hand side this is a reflected light uh, from the building um, it's gone on to the white area so the doors getting a little bit of the detailing as well and then a bit more shadow sort of semi semi dark shadow just around the top of the archway so it's starting to come together a little bit looking similar not the same but similar and here I'm using some sap green and some browns to get this nice, nice dark foliage and then I mix some lighter um, green put that in get a bit of variation and then in a few moments I'm adding in some uh, violet again for these um, or the flowers that is on the foliage just there as well so don't get to finish this one in the lesson but I will come continue with it next week and then 
probably be starting something else for working on. But um, next week you'll need to make sure you've got your acrylic paints and a photograph like this one, which I'll put on the website for you um, to work to, uh, to print off. Um, if you're online or if you're at home or if you're sorry if you're in um, lessons then you can you can probably get one from me 